Being creatures of habit, we tend to wake up every day and make the same mistakes of yesterday. While telling ourselves, time after time, we will make today better. Yet we still go to bed failing to accomplish this seemingly simple task. No matter how bad we continue to screw up our lives, our children's lives, and our community. For some unknown reason, we expect positive changes to occur in our communities and across the world, but we depend on others to make the necessary changes from day to day that we ourselves are unable to make. Change will never start unless we take a hard look in the mirror and tell that person looking back that it has to start now. It has to start with me and I will not allow my children, grandchildren, or my community to suffer from mistakes I can help prevent. The war on drugs has been fought by law enforcement, legislators, and judges for nearly a century while communities all across the world have lost billions of dollars, countless lives, and children have been raised by the courts and distant relatives because of the policing effort and drug addiction is at an all-time high and still climbing in policing states. When is this going to stop? When are we going to realize it's a community problem? It is a village problem. It's our problem to fix, not just the addicts that are struggling to fight their demons on their own. It's not just the forgotten children's burden to bear, and it most definitely cannot be policed away. It can't be fixed with money or jails. And if you believe it takes a village to raise a good child, then you must realize it also takes a village to create a problem of this magnitude. Back in the 1980s, 90s, and early 2000s, it was very common and widely accepted to be given an aspirin or ibuprofen concoction to treat temporary pain. Whether it was a headache, sore throat, a broken bone, minor surgery, or even monthly cramps, pain relief was always a twist or a pop top away. Most of our parents would give us pills because they knew we'd get over whatever we were dealing with within a few hours or a couple of days and these temporary concoctions would help alleviate the temporary symptoms we were having. While this was happening in homes across the country, doctors all across the country was being introduced to a wide range of synthetic opioids to treat patients that had gone through minor surgery and even some acute, temporary, bone and tissue pain was being treated. Around 2005 was the time when we started seeing a huge shift in the way we treated acute and even chronic pain in parts of the country. We started seeing more and more doctors prescribing more and more muscle relaxers and opioids to patients that were experiencing chronic pain, pain lasting more than a few days. In the beginning, it seemed to be the answer, as was the occasional ibuprofen or aspirin from our mom to treat chronically ill patients, but eventually they needed more and more of these synthetic drugs to overcome their pain. The reason being is that synthetics block the pain receptors in our brain, which tricks us into believing our body isn't broken, which isn't a bad thing if you're experiencing short-term pain. As this problem of over-prescribing got worse, parts of the country decided they had enough of the pharmaceutical anecdotal approach at chronic illness and injuries, and they began to seek out natural plant-based medicine that would not only treat pain, but also created the balance our bodies needed to heal itself, without leading to even more problems like liver failure, heart disease, high blood pressure, and even death. Unfortunately, other parts of the country tried another anecdotal approach at the problem. Lawmakers in those parts of the country thought they fixed the prescription pill problem by policing it until it became non-existent. Almost 15 years later, we have seen the policing states lose even more money to a failed drug war. We have seen overdoses climb to a frightening level and we have watched thousands of friends and family members die because they were turned into drug-dependent victims created by the same system that created the problem in the first place. While those parts of the country became plagued with fatal overdoses and overpopulated jails, the other two-thirds of the country that showed compassion 
while using a common sense approach at helping their chronically ill and injured continue to see life saved and community strengthened because the sick and chronically ill were able to choose a safe and non-destructive natural plant to treat their condition. Those states understood that mom wasn't wrong when she gave them a pill to fix a temporary problem, but they knew that pill was a temporary fix just as mom did for a temporary problem because pills don't fix the underlying issues that leads to the symptoms that cause pain and discomfort. They have also figured out that our temporary pain and temporary illness must be treated differently than our chronic conditions. Chronic illness isn't temporary. Chronic illness has a root cause that cannot be fixed by blocking the pain receptors in our brain with synthetic drugs that were meant for short-term use. A chronic condition has to be treated by plant-based natural compounds that aid our bodies in the healing process. Meaning, if you consume this compound, there will be positive changes in your body, positive changes in your mentality, and just as important as those positive changes, you will not damage organs, or brain receptors slash tissue in the process. Two thirds of the United States have allowed their communities to make this change. 86% of the country is already in support of natural medicine. And it's time the rest of the country stops trying to control their community and make profits off their chronically ill, sick, and dying neighbors. It's time to re-legalize cannabis and allow the free people of this country to make the choice to live in homeostasis. Pharmaceutical free and free from the fear of being locked up the rest of their life because they chose to live instead of slowly dying from synthetic concoctions so the pharmaceutical companies and law enforcement can continue to make a profit. Our lawmakers have finally realized how much cannabis can help our sick and chronically ill friends, neighbors, and loved ones. They will be introducing a doctor decides medical bill and it will most likely be reduced to something other than what it started out to be. But I do believe we will see a medical bill pass this session. Is this enough? It is most definitely a good starting point, but definitely not the protection our loved ones need or deserve and it's nowhere near the point other states are with protecting their sick and dying friends, families, and loved ones. It has taken many decades to prove the usefulness of cannabis. And we as a community and a country have lost many great people because of the prohibition against this plant. Many people could have lived a healthier, happier, pain-free life if they were able to choose cannabis over harmful pharmaceuticals. And many children would not have been raised by a grandparent or the foster system because their mother or father spent their life in prison because they turned to cannabis for relief. A compassionate medical bill will most definitely be a huge step in the right direction, and a good medical bill is way overdue. Is this enough? Not at all. Prohibition is the root cause to all the lives being destroyed because of marijuana. It has been proven time after time, and it is redundant for me to include all the statistics here. The proof is out there. As a matter of fact, it's probably on the person's page that shared this. Do your sick or chronically ill loved one a favor and look it up. One very important point that must be heard is the fact that until marijuana reform happens, nobody will be safe from their homes being raided, their assets seized, their loved ones jailed, and children will continue to lose federally funded financial aid and will continue to lose their mothers and fathers. It's still happening in every state with medical marijuana in place. It's going to continue to happen until the communities and the states pull together and send a message to Congress demanding reform, demanding real protections, and demand an end to prohibition. Now is the time to not only support a good medical bill, but we must also support Senate Bill 80, Adult 21 Bill. The FDA and other organizations will start controlling the industry, which means you will start seeing more and more restrictions put on the test subjects, hemp farmers and CBD stores, and you will see more social media control, just like we've already started seeing with accounts being turned off and CBD stores closed. The markets have been tested. The studies have been done. 
Now that you know this information about people being unjustly jailed, dying as a direct result of the failed war against a plant, and your loved ones could be living a pain-free, healthier life like those are in other free-to-choose states, isn't it your responsibility to take action? Isn't it time to quit looking the other way? Aren't you now allowing this to happen? If you have ever wanted to get involved with something that will make a huge impact in many people's lives, now is the time to do it. Join the cannabis movement, like and share this video, and call your local legislators and local representatives and tell them to vote yes on cannabis reform.